the intentional radiator and equivalent isotropically radiated power levels are two things that are really important for RF math calculations and making sure that you are in compliance with local regulatory domains. In RF math, there are a few terms you really need to understand. The transmitter and receiver are obviously the device that creates the signal and the device that receives the signal, respectively. For the math, you will need to understand two important terms for calculations and knowing where transmit powers are calculated. The first of these terms is the intentional radiator. In a wireless LAN transmission system, this is the point at which the antenna is connected to the radio or to the cable that leads to the radio. The RF signal from the transmitting radio may pass through connectors, cables, attenuators, amplifiers, and lightning arresters before it even gets to the antenna. All of these components impact the signal before it arrives at the antenna. The combination of these things is the signal that you are intentionally trying to send. Regulatory bodies have set legal power limits measured at this point, the intentional radiator, sometimes called the intentionally radiated power in regulations. The second term with which you need to be familiar is the equivalent isotropically radiated power, EIRP. It is the theoretical power that is delivered by an intentional radiator to an imaginary isotropic antenna that would produce an even distribution of RF power with the same amplitude actually experienced in the preferred direction of the antenna. All of that really means the power placed into the air measured at the tip of the antenna. Mathematically, it is the combination of the transmitted signal, all loss introduced by connectors such as pigtails or metal connectors, attenuators, lightning arresters, amplifiers, everything between the transmitter and the lead of the antenna that connects to the cable is the intentional radiator. All of that combined with the gain of the antenna is the equivalent isotropically radiated power. Relative power measurement. Now that we understand intentionally radiated power and equivalent isotropically radiated power, let's talk about where the power is measured as well as the names of the measurement locations. The first will be taken at the transmitter and is an absolute measure. In this example, it is 100 milliwatts, or the equivalent to 20 decibels measured. The second will be the measurement of loss introduced by the cable and any connectors. Cables and connectors only introduce loss since they increase the amount of wired media the signal must traverse before striking the antenna. The media has some resistance in it, which introduces some loss into the transmission because there's resistance as the electric current goes through the medium. There's equipment that you can attach to uh, the ends of cables to actually measure the true amount of intentionally radiated power the system is transferring to the antenna. So a measurement taken at the end of the cable which connects to the antenna is able to be measured and can be expressed in an absolute value. In the case it is 50 milliwatts or 17 dBm, the location is where the intentionally radiated power or IR is measured. It is also one of the locations that is regulated by governments around the world, how much power you can purposely put into an antenna. After the intentionally radiated power, antennas are attached and they are bidirectional passive amplifiers. They increase the signal of both transmissions and receptions based upon the configuration of the elements inside the antenna. Some are more powerful than others. The next important location is very near the tip of the antenna where the signal leaves the antenna for the air, our medium. The measurement taken here is the equivalent isotropically radiated power, or EIRP. It is the product of transmitted power, any connectors, cable loss introduced, any amplification, any attenuation created there, any imperfections, any voltage standing wave ratio problems where you have impedance mismatch between connectors and cables. Anything that, that goes into that will be a combination of what makes up this signal. 
active amplifiers are going to introduce electric current into the cable to boost the power and they're very useful if you have a long cable run between the transmitter and the antenna. In this scenario we started with a 100 milliwatt signal introduced 3 dB of loss and then added 3 dB of gain to find ourselves back at the original 100 milliwatts or 20 dB of power. In the field, it is easy to convert everything to dB, then simply just add and subtract so you don't have to worry about milliwatts versus decibels measured or decibels measured against an isotropic radiator. For example, 20 dB, which is what we're transmitting at our radio, minus the 3 dB of the 100 feet of minus 3 dB per 100 foot cable, plus the gain of the antenna of 3 dB will take us back to our original 20 dBm or 100 milliwatts. Knowing where to apply that knowledge in troubleshooting and implementation is of great importance because in certain regulatory domains, 100 milliwatts may be the most you're allowed to purposely put in the air.